Hi everyone, it's Tina Binden here, personal brand coach and strategist. And I'm wanting to talk to you today about your target market or niche. So does the word niche put the fear of God into you? Your brain closes down, you start to freak out, you become overwhelmed or you don't know where to start when it comes to that? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you a foolproof method of finding your target market the top mistakes people make when it comes to finding their clients and also some top tips in order to do this simply and actually effectively okay so when it comes to finding a niche particularly creative soul inspired people in business who really want to make an impact and feel like they have a great purpose and a mission, the word niche can really freak them out. And you might be one of those people perhaps. But I want you to think about niche in terms of best fit people for you, okay? Because to some people niche sounds like a skin condition where you need to go to the doctor and get some cream for it. But really, if you embrace the word niche as who are you best suited to help and who will get the best results from you, then it opens up the space to have a think about it without panicking. Okay, so that's tip number one. Don't worry about the word niche in terms of, oh my God, demographic after demographic and it's going to straightjacket me and it's going to... Um, prevent me from helping the right people because it's going to be too narrow try to flip the script on that in fact if you pick the right niche aka the right uh, audience that is really ripe for what you have to offer and will get the most out of it then that is your golden ticket to being passion-filled and profitable right because you're doing your best work with these people and they're raving about you so you get repeat business and referrals okay so embrace and flipped the script on that word niche and really think about it in terms of who is the best fit for the products that you have or the services that you have okay so that's my first tip <coughs> so when it comes to finding an ideal target market people make a couple of you know, big mistakes, all right? The first one is that they focus solely on the demographics. So they get the little pen and their paper and they start to think, you know, how old is my person? Um, you know, where do they live? Do they, what income? You know, are they married? Do, do they have children? Are they single? And pretty soon you're down this Alice in the rabbit hole situation where you're like, I don't know whether they like yoga or tie, tie, tie by boxing. I'm not sure whether she likes a green smoothie or whether she's a, like a double espresso girl. So my first mistake that I see is people get so into the demographics and they become overwhelmed with the demographics, okay? And demographics are, you know, important. It's important to be aware of them. But there's something even more important than the demographics, okay? And that something that is more important than, de than the demographics is the, the desires or the struggles, right? That is the main thing. If you know what your clients are struggling with really clearly and you know how you fill that need, then the demographics are secondary, okay? And the demographics are a bonus that helps the clarity and helps shape and articulate who those people are. So you get clearer and clearer and clearer. But my first mistake is please don't start with demographics because you don't have enough. Hello, beautiful Julia. You don't have enough. I'm just talking about ideal clients and how to find them. You don't have enough information, particularly if you're just starting in your business, to fill in all those demographics, okay? So we always start with the problems that your people are having and how you solve them. Or if you're a product-based business and you don't exactly solve, you know, personal problems and you have product-based business, then it's the desires that they have through buying your product, 
or what your product will solve for them, okay? So we start with those things first. And so that helps you avoid that mistake of looking at demographics. How old are they? Where do they live? What's their income? Do they have children? All of those things can really overwhelm you because you don't know those things about them yet. However, you do have a strong intuition and suspicion that what they are struggling with, okay? So that's what we start with, all right? The second mistake that I see with people um, who are looking at ideal client is that they create all of this stuff in a vacuum. So they create these great products, these great services, etc., and then they just put them out into the world and, you know, cross their fingers and hope that it's everything that their ideal client wants it to be, okay? And then they get really down and they really get distressed when they've spent all this time and oftentimes money to set some things up and nobody's buying, they're hearing crickets, right? That's mistake number two. And how we avoid doing that is what I call the want-need method, and I'll go into that a little bit more in a moment. So we can't, we can create what we think would be great for our people, but there's a missing part to that process, which a lot of people miss. They launch their things straight away, and then they're really disappointed when they don't fly. So here is the want and need method. The, the want part is what do you want to create? So what are your skill sets? What are your gifts? What do you think or have that suspicion that this is what people would really need in order to achieve this result or in order to feel this way or in order to uh, reach this outcome, okay? So that's good. You, you've packaged it up or you've thought about it and, and how you're going to really meet this particular problem. Then you need to marry it up to what your ideal best fit audience actually want and actually need so this is the need part what is it that they need in order to achieve this thing to reach this outcome to get this transformation so in between the want and the need there is the testing and this is the key part that so many people skip or don't even know about okay and that is you need to test what you've created, okay? You need to get out into the marketplace and you need to talk to people, offer it to people, either at a lower price point to begin with while you're um, beta testing it and see if that's exactly what they want, okay? And if they're loving it, great. If they're giving you feedback that, oh, I love this part, this part not so much, then take that feedback on board and tweak, which brings me to the third mistake, and that is that people start big. They run with this vision of, wow, like I could do this for a session and then I could do this big signature package and then I could do these courses and then I could open up a membership site and then and then and then and then. And these things are all possible for sure, but they come in stages. If you are just starting out, you should be really focusing on your one-on-one -on -one services, like an introductory one-off session plus something that you can offer at that session as an ongoing like short-term package, right? So a mid-range package. And so mistake number three is that people build these bigger than Ben-Hur visions put so much time, so much effort, um, and so much organisation and money into it when they haven't even really figured out what the problems are and what, you know, what people want, how they want it delivered, or any of those things. So the want and need method eliminates all three of those problems, okay? Because you figure out what you'd like to offer, and preferably you've done some market research, so that means you've you know, talk to people either offline, like customers that come in, um, your email list if you've got one, in Facebook groups, 
at networking events, you chat to people, find out, tell them what you do, you know, find out what they would like to have solved if they are your ideal clients. And then you create a small introductory service that actually solves a particular problem, like one specific problem, and you start to test it out in the marketplace, right? Before you start building out these group programs, these masterminds, you know, etc. All right? So we've covered those top three problems and how we solve those problems. And the last tip I have for you is your niche or your ideal client, when we're finding that out, it's all about the testing or we could say almost like dating your ideal client, not literally, but because that would be weird, but to experiment. So say, for example, you're going out on a date with someone. You would normally meet for coffee maybe first, maybe go to a lunch, then graduate to a dinner, et cetera, et cetera, right? You certainly wouldn't meet someone straight away and, you know, like flick your the keys to your house and say, hey, how about it, you know, how about you come around? That would just be creepy and weird. And the same thing applies to your business. When you are looking to form rapport and a really great business relationship with either customers that buy your products or clients that avail themselves of your products and your services, it's really important to test test it out and, you know, form that relationship, date your client. So you can't just go into the marketplace with these massive products and massive services without feeling forward, getting feedback and really connecting with your client. So to recap, niche is not a dirty word. Try and flip the script and really look at it as specifically tailoring and customizing your business to those people who are not only ready but willing to embrace not just what you do but how you do it they are your best fit ideal audience okay number 2 Try to um, do some market research first. Do not create everything in a vacuum. Do your market research. Have some chats with your, e like email your list. Have some chats with people in Facebook groups at networking events, friends or family that you know you can help and, and really start to understand what the problems are. Focus in on those problems and exactly how you can help people or focus on the desired outcomes that people want and how you can help them get there, okay? Then you can start adding in some extra information and demographics, all right? So don't start with the demographic. Start with those struggles and problems that your clients have and the desires that they have, okay? And finally, like test it out. Start small. When we start small, we are getting really specific and being specific is a really very clear and powerful way to start getting known for what you do. And then we can change and tweak things so easily. We haven't put months and weeks and months and sometimes people even have told me years into developing huge things that, that you end up finding that people don't want. So we start small. So I hope that has been helpful to you. So I would love to encourage you, if you're not quite sure about who your ideal client is, I'm holding a free workshop on the 30th of April where we're going to dive deeper into finding your niche or your ideal client. Plus, I'm going to be stepping out and sharing, um, stepping out and unpacking and sharing, you know, the, the core parts that you need to be focusing on if you want a really profitable, passion fueled business that's 100% authentic to you in terms of your brand and also very aligned to your heart and soul, okay? 
So I encourage you to click on the link and come and join us. If you can attend live with me, I've got a beautiful step-by-step -step guide for you. If you can't, that's okay. Life happens. So I will have a replay and it will come straight to your inbox after the workshop has finished. All right, that's it from me. I shall be back Monday to talk about um, another really important part of your business and brand structure if you're just starting your business or maybe you've been in business for around six to 12 months and things are not flowing for you the way you would like. So I will see you Monday. I hope you can join me in by clicking the link. Have a great evening or day wherever you are and a fantastic weekend and I will talk to you again soon. Bye for now.